Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we are going to be going over Unit 8, Topic 6 of AP Psychology, Feeding and Eating, Substance and Addictive and Personality Disorders. Everyone is unique and has different personalities, but what constitutes a personality disorder? We are going to be talking about a few different personality disorders. These are enduring patterns of behavior that disrupt a person's normal social functioning. They are generally categorized into three groups. The first is anxiety-related personality disorders, such as avoidant personality disorder. The symptoms here are extreme sensitivity to criticism, seeking acceptance without any criticism, social withdrawal even though the individual is still wanting to be socially accepted, and low self-esteem. Now some of these symptoms may seem like relatively normal things that people go through in life. However, it's a disorder when the symptoms cause distress that lasts long enough to impact the person's ability to maintain relationships. The second group is disorders that cause odd or offbeat behaviors. One example of a disorder in this category is schizotypal personality disorder. Symptoms of this disorder are not severe enough to be schizophrenia, but have similar oddities of thought, behavior, and speech. Here, individuals may struggle with communicating effectively with others, and they may seem like they don't care about the conversation. Individuals will also also struggle with close relationships, as other individuals may find them strange or eccentric. The third group is disorders that cause impulsive or dramatic behaviors. Some examples are narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and antisocial personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder is characterized by a pattern of having an exaggerated sense of worth, talent, fantasizing about unlimited power, brilliance, or beauty, the constant need for attention, and when criticized, the individual will react either rage and strong or completely unfazed. A person with this disorder will struggle to empathize with other people and will often take advantage of other people around them. Borderline personality disorder is characterized by an enduring instability of relationships, self-image, and mood that negatively affects them or gets in the way of social functioning. Some of the ways that this shows itself is self-damaging behavior, like drug use or overreacting and getting into fights. They also might have fluctuating moods and feel an emptiness throughout their lives. Anti Antisocial personality disorder is one of the most difficult personality disorders to treat and has been thoroughly researched. A person with this disorder is sometimes referred to as a sociopath. This disorder is characterized by a lack of consciousness, impulsivity, and aggressiveness, and a disregard for the safety of others. A person with this disorder does not have empathy or remorse for what they have done. Personality disorders can stem back to different genetic factors, such as family history, or can happen due to environmental situations, such as a childhood trauma. Depending on what the cause is, and what the disorder is, the treatment can vary. Sometimes individuals will just need help understanding themselves and reduce their stress and anxiety. This can be done by using psychotherapy, medication, or even group therapy. We'll talk more about treatments though later in this unit. So that is a quick overview of some of the different personality disorders. The next part of this standard is eating disorders. These disorders mostly affect adolescents, and those who are most vulnerable are those who see thinness as ideal and are not satisfied with their body. This way of thinking can unfortunately be reinforced by different media outlets, Instagram and TikTok filters, and the photoshopping of models to create unrealistic body proportions. The good news is that most of the people diagnosed with an eating disorder do improve. One study showed that in a 22-year study, two out of three women with anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa had recovered. There are three different types of eating disorders that we're going to be talking about in this video. Anorexia nervosa typically starts as a weight loss diet, which turns into a starvation diet. A person's weight will end up dropping way below normal, although the individual will still feel overweight, and at the same time, they may obsessively exercise. Individuals will have a fear of becoming overweight and put significant restrictions on what they consume to prevent them from gaining weight. A person with anorexia nervosa will have a distorted body image of themselves and will not allow themselves to stay at a normal body weight. Bulimia nervosa also can start as a weight loss diet, but when the individual breaks the diet, they end up overeating on the foods that they were not letting themselves have. Once they've binged the food, then they purge it by either vomiting, using laxatives, fasting, or excessive exercise. A person who has bulimia nervosa will usually have a weight that fluctuates around normal, which makes the condition easier to hide. Because they are constantly craving foods that they don't believe they should have eaten, coupled with intense fear of gaining weight, an individual can also deal with anxiety, depression, or guilt after they've binged on the food. The last eating disorder that we're going to talk about is binge eating disorder. This is when a person is unable to stop a cycle of uncontrolled overeating, and then feeling extremely remorseful after. Because there is no purging behaviors, a person with this disorder may be over 
overweight. Now, the last topic that we're going to review in this video is substance and addictive disorders, which is a diagnosis that includes many degrees of excessive use of substances. In this situation, we're talking about drugs such as depressants, opioid stimulants, and hallucinogens. These are topics that we last talked about in our Unit 2 Topic 8 video, which if you need a refresher of the different drugs and their impacts on an individual, go back and re-watch my Unit 2 Topic 8 video. Now, dependence is when you have a behavioral, cognitive, and or psychological symptoms that show that you have a continued use of substance, even with problems occurring from the use of it. An individual who's dependent on a substance will have built up a tolerance, have withdrawal if they stop using it, and have an enduring drive to continue to use. Substance abuse is the next step after an individual suffers from substance dependence. Substance abuse is a cycle of using a substance that results in severe negative consequences for an individual's social occupation or daily functioning. These consequences can include being absent from school, work, getting arrested, or having relationship problems. All right, now comes the time to practice what we have learned. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and supporting the channel. And don't forget to check out my ultimate review pack It'll help you with anything you need in AP Psychology, and it'll definitely help you get that A or that 5 on the national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.